Hello everyone, Reflected here, and today I'm going to show you what to do if you lose one of the engines while flying the Mosquito. The Mozzie is the first multi-engine warbird in DCS world, so this is something new. Most of us are going to fly it in a hostile environment, and quite probably sooner or later you're going to find yourself in a situation where you only have one engine running. Let's see how to handle that situation. First, let's see why it's a problem in the first place. Obviously, you get much less thrust, which is not good. But also, that thrust is offset from the center line. It's gonna make the aircraft want to yaw away from the good engine. To make matters worse, a windmilling propeller creates a huge amount of parasitic drag. So, you have one side being pulled forward by a good engine, and the other side pushed back by a bad one. You have to act quickly. Your first reaction should be closing the throttle on the damaged engine. This is where having two separate axes comes in handy. But don't worry, you can also use your mouse. Let's say our left engine got damaged, so I'm pulling back the left throttle all the way. Then, press the relevant feathering button over here and keep it depressed for a few seconds then it will pop out automatically. I'm using keybinds because it's easier than hitting it with your mouse in an emergency. This will turn the prop blades parallel to the wind, considerably decreasing drag and the amount of perspiration on your forehead. Like uh, my gliding instructor once said, props are overrated. They are just big fans that are installed to keep the cockpit cool. Because, you know, as soon as they stop turning, the pilots start sweating. Feathering the prop is crucial. It's the difference between a manageable landing and a potential flat spin. In some cases, the engine is still running, but you must feather it while you still can. The feathering is done by an electric pump driven by the number two engine that boosts oil pressure in order to turn the blades. So you need electric power and oil pressure to do it. If you have an oil leak or a fire, your chances of feathering the prop fall drastically with every second. Yes, the engine could provide thrust for another 30 seconds, maybe even minutes, but is it worth it? No, it's not. A side note here, I heard Nick Gray said when they simulate engine failures, they also pull the prop control all the way back before feathering, just so that they don't kill the engine. The pilot's notes doesn't mention this, but it was written in wartime, of course. When the prop finally stops, then, and only then, turn off the magnetos. If the prop is still turning, that means the pistons are still moving and unignited fuel can be pushed out the exhaust pipes. We don't want to spray an aircraft that's made of wood with high octane fuel, do we? So leave the mags on until the prop stops. Then, turn off the fuel selector switch behind your seat. I'm using keyboard shortcuts to do that because uh, we have an emergency here and I don't want to fiddle with switching seats, turning around and trying to click it with my mouse. You should also close the radiator on the faulty side. There's nothing to keep cool anymore and it just exacerbates the drag problem. Okay, we dodged the worst bullet. Now, let's fly home. The aircraft will still want to yaw away from the good engine because of the asymmetrical thrust. So make sure you use sufficient rudder trim to counter it. Keep an eye on the top needle here, that's your slip indicator. Keep it centered. Another good trick is to bank something like 5 degrees into the good engine. Make sure you have a speed of at least 170 miles an hour. The lower the speed, the higher the angle of attack, the less authority your rudder has, and the closer you get to a flat spin. So remember the old adage, speed is life. When you're below 12,000 feet, it's possible to maintain altitude at climb power settings, so 2850 RPM and plus 9 boost. Also, get rid of any bombs or external tanks you may be carrying. You want to make your aircraft as light and streamlined as possible. Just make sure you don't drop them on friendlies. 
Next, you can cheer up your navigator with a song. Meaning on a wing and a prayer. Though there's one motor gun, we can still carry on. Meaning on a wing and a prayer. <laughs> Okay, here we are. Uh, that's Manston right there, our home base. And we're coming in on a wing and a prayer, single engine. What you want to do here is make sure, make sure you have uh, more altitude than you would normally. It's because if you need it in an emergency, you can still trade altitude. Uh, for airspeed, but you can't really do the other way around when you only have one engine running. So we're gonna make a pattern here, and if you can help it, always turn into the good engine, never into the the bad one. Or if you have to do it, make it a very shallow turn with a, a shallow angle bank. It's because uh, the wing that's inside the turn has already a lower airspeed than the outside wing and the outside wing would be pulled forward by uh, the engine the low speeds you can spin down very easily again trying to keep the airspeed at 170 miles per hour or above as we turn downwind then we can lower the flaps but only to 15 degrees let's do that 15 degrees that's it the aircraft noses up loses airspeed a little bit so push the nose down a bit to keep it up then let's lower the landing gear now the problem is only one engine is functioning so you only have one engine driven hydraulic pump so be prepared that lowering the gear will take longer than normal counter the nose down uh, effect with nose up trim and keep the airspeed up we have two green lights so we have gear down 15 degrees of flap shallow turn onto final keep the speed up hundred and fifty now at this point you can still decide to abort and go around but once we're on final and we drop more flaps if needed then there's no way you can go around so you have to commit to land the aircraft so I'm at 150 slightly higher than normally but if we drop full flaps that will uh, increase the rate of descent okay let's let's drop flaps As I decrease power, uh, the asymmetric thrust will decrease as well. So counter it with uh, the rudder or trim. And now I can aim for 120, 125 miles per hour approach speed like with engine assisted landings as well. Let's flare the aircraft, cut the throttle, three point attitude, Good, we're down. Until you have speed, uh, try to go to the side of the runway or taxi off the runway if you can, because once the aircraft stops, it's quite impossible to, uh, to taxi with one engine. Let me show you why. Let's raise the flaps. Okay, we stop, we clear the runway, and as I apply power, the aircraft turns left, full left rudder, 
differential brake I'm trying hard not to turn left but that's all I can do so keep this in mind if if possible you can use the airspeed that you still airspeed the rolling speed uh, that you still have to taxi off the runway if possible in order not to obstruct uh, the runway for the others okay time to go for a pint of bitter at the officer's mess but uh, only after I change my pants let's have a look at a slightly worse case say you can't feather the engine because the prop control is damaged too the same thing is true as before only it will be considerably harder to maintain control over the aircraft the drag from the unfeathered prop is horrendous now I just stop the engine and it's windmilling but in combat it can happen that the prop would just stop dead then I'd really be struggling to keep her straight and also to keep my speed up and maintain altitude if you lose control the aircraft can easily end up in a flat spin an even worse case would be if the engine was on fire don't forget you're flying the wooden wonder so you want to press the fire extinguisher button under these covers here as soon as you can and if it doesn't help get the hell out of there time to hit the silk open the side door here and if you can feather the right engine because you're gonna jump dangerously close to a spinning propeller and out we go in DCS you have to repeat the process with the navigator so hit F1 then bail out again well good luck contacting the French underground and that's it I hope you managed to learn something new today and one day it will save you from Stalag Luft 3 or going into the drink I guarantee that it will come handy in V for Victory, my upcoming mosquito campaign. So stay tuned.